Welcome to all of you on this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. We have just one announcement today, and that is uh, we do apologize for those of you who did not receive your packet in time for our annual meeting uh, that was held last Sunday. Uh, hopefully you will get that soon, or we can make them available to you if you simply call the church office, and we'll be happy to do that. We have no other announcements, so we now prepare for worship with a prelude. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the entire universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name, a word I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my heart. In the assembly of the upright, in the congregation, great are your works, O Lord. Faithlessness and justice, and all your precepts are. 
solution to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise and yours forever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the years, one thing I've done with catechetical students is before each class, ask this question, how are you doing? How did your week go? Always at least one young person has a very brief answer, and often enough, uh, even more of them, or maybe all. I ask, so-and-so, how have you been? Good. Okay. Uh, how about you, so-and-so? Good. And so on and so forth. Once in a class on counseling, we seminary students received a handout related to uh, this sort of thing, this sort of uh, reply. It was a list about different kinds of feelings, some of them of a general nature, like happy or sad. The descriptions that, in a counseling situation, might be more helpful would be identifying words expressing more specific feelings or emotions. Instead of simply happy, maybe joyful or gleeful or exuberant. And for the word sad, maybe depressed, melancholy. Disconsolate. Helping a person pinpoint just which feeling is the most accurate at some given time, that can be helpful in the process of emotional healing. On the other hand, giving just one name to a particular feeling, that also can be difficult, can be limiting. Because when it comes to emotions, there are, after all, shades of meaning that aren't quite the same, but still might overlap. That's what we sometimes see when it comes to the Psalms in the Hebrew Scriptures. They fall into five different groups, five categories. The first three having to do with learning and wisdom, uh, those then of great distress, also known as laments, and those of blessings and curses. While most psalms focus on just one of them, some combine two or even three. Furthermore, these categories themselves are not always easy to differentiate, and in some cases, we shouldn't even try. That's somewhat true of the one 
we have before us this morning, Psalm 111. It seems to be a combination of two other categories, namely praise and thanksgiving. It starts right out with praise the Lord, but the words immediately following that, I will give thanks to the Lord. This morning we're going to focus on the thanksgiving part because it reminds me of God's faithfulness toward the people God has chosen, of keeping the covenant established from of old, as God delivers them over and over again from dangers of one kind or another. So we ourselves are delivered, and that's always opportunity to give thanks. In the psalm, we're reminded not only how it's important to know who God is, but also what God does, as in these words. Great are the works of the Lord. The works of his hands are faithful and just. He has shown the power of his works. Full of honor and majesty is his work. The Lord is not simply someone who creates the earth and all that is in it, says that it's good, and then walks away to leave it care for itself. No, instead, creation is something continuous, a something ongoing, a something God keeps shaping and reshaping the world that we live in, including us, even as we ourselves are called to do our part in caring for the world. The same in the history of the people of Israel. For example, God is ever mindful of his covenant with them, promises to them, which were made not only with and for Abraham, but for all those coming after him, such as deliverance from famine in Israel, Deliverance from bondage in Egypt. Deliverance from the wilderness. Deliverance from the Philistines and other nearby enemies. Deliverance from exile in Babylon. And often enough, deliverance from themselves. From trying to rely on their own abilities, on their own wealth, or on other kingdoms, on other gods. So it is that the Lord sends redemption to his people and is gracious and merciful. All these things God does are not for a day or a week or a year or even a lifetime, but as we read in the psalm three times, forever and forever and forever. Last November, when the church council had its monthly meeting, it was only a week or so before Thanksgiving. So for the devotion, I did what many of us do from time to time. I made a list of things I'm thankful for. Due to the pandemic, maybe it took a little more effort this past year, but for me, at least not much. As I now read this list to you, which since last November has been expanded, at the same time, I want you to think about a list of your own. And before beginning, one other thing. I want to mention, as we all know, there are countless numbers of people who now have more than ever very little to give thanks for. I'm sorry for that, we, are, we all are. Why that's the way it is for so many? I have no good overall answer. It would be a worthwhile theme to preach on. 
but another time. For now, as for me, here are some things that bring a deep sense of gratitude. First, and not surprisingly, my family. A year ago when my mother-in-law suddenly died, Deborah stayed in Texas to help our son care for her father in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's. I've been to visit them once last year, back in May. And also in the past year, I've been once uh, to see our daughter in Chicago. And they haven't gotten to see each other at all. But we have the telephone, and we can always do FaceTime. And I'm still old-fashioned enough to send occasional letters in the mail, which of course these days take longer to get places. Second, I'm thankful for their good health and my own as well. I'm thankful for all the people who are helping us stay that way. Third, I'm thankful I still have a job and food and clothes on my back and a home to go to. And whenever I get back there, I'm thankful for the two four-legged creatures who always meet me at the door, wagging their tails and more than ready for a walk. During the winter, I'm thankful for days of sunshine, or at least for part of the day. And I am thankful for all of you being part of today's worship, even if it is virtual. Last of all, I'm thankful for God and God's ever-present love, a love that for us in our spiritual tradition comes straight from the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Next week, we will look at a wonderful psalm that is strictly about praising God.
guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For those who continue facing economic hardship, particularly during this time of the pandemic, restaurant owners, cooks and food servers, those working in retail, those in travel and hospitality services, those in large corporations, civil servants, and many others as well. In addition to the unemployed and underemployed, we remember those unable to work at all, especially persons with physical or cognitive disabilities or those suffering from mental illness. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those employed in health care, that they may be safe. For those who work in schools, colleges, and other educational settings, and the students in such places. We also remember parents, siblings, other family members, and the stress that they experience. We ask that all may have times of respite and that they may have good sleep as well. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are most at risk, the sick, the chronically ill, the hungry, the homeless, those who are incarcerated. We lift up to you from our voices and our hearts, others we love. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who share your word with others, by example as well as by speech, this week on the anniversary of their deaths, we remember the four chaplains who in 1943 gave their lives in service to country. In name, George Fox, Alexander Good, Clark Poling, and John Washington. We give thanks as well for the lives of church members and military veterans, namely Simon Bard and Dale Brenneman, who have recently passed through death into eternal life. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear are the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join with me now in that prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now for the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.